Welcome to Get Loaded, a show where we teach you everything about ammunition. Ammunition can be many things. It can be rockets, missiles, rocks, or BBs. But today we're going to focus on small arms ammunition. Small arms ammunition typically refers to what's available to the general public in stores. Small arms ammunition is comprised of four components. The projectile, the powder, the casing, and the primer. Today we're talking about projectiles. The projectile is the part of the cartridge that leaves the gun and hits the target. Projectiles come in a wide range of sizes, shapes, weights, coatings, and materials. Today, however, we're going to focus on three, FMJ, TMJ, and TPJ. So stick around and learn more about these three most common projectiles right here on Get Loaded. So first up, FMJ, Full Metal Jacket. FMJ is one of the most common projectiles used. So common, in fact, they named a movie after it. Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket implies that the entire projectile is coated in metal. However, that is a misnomer. In reality, the majority of Full Metal Jacket projectiles still have exposed lead bases. Full Metal Jacket projectiles were invented in 1882 by Swiss Colonel Edward Rubin. They were intended to improve the feeding characteristics in small arms that use internal mechanical manipulation of cartridges in order to chamber rounds as opposed to externally hand-reloaded single-shot firearms. FMJs were also intended to prevent leading of the barrel, and as history has showed us, this was a pretty significant leap forward in bullet technology. Now let's look at some of the pros and cons of FMJ projectiles. Pros High Velocities The construction of the projectile allows for it to be pushed to pretty high velocities, allowing stable flights for longer distances. Less Exposed Lead Original projectiles were typically solid lead bullets. These bullets, however, would gunk up your barrel and diminish your accuracy. FMJ prevents that. Cons Exposed Lead Some of the exposed lead on the base of the projectile vaporizes during firing, which can be harmful if inhaled and will create lead deposits in your barrel. Does not expand While FMJs can be designed to tumble and fragment on impact, they are not designed to mushroom and dump their kinetic energy into a target. Now let's talk about TMJ, Total Metal Jacket. Unlike a FMJ, the lead core of a TMJ is completely covered in metal, which eliminates the concerns of exposed lead. Traditionally, a TMJ will function similarly to a FMJ of the same size and weight. But what makes a TMJ different? Let's look at the pros and cons. Pros No exposed lead Unlike an FMJ, a TMJ is not going to expose you to harmful lead vapors or lead deposits in your barrel. Location Versatility Most indoor ranges don't allow exposed lead ammo for the safety of their customers and employees. Total Metal Jacket ammo is perfect for these scenarios. Cost Effective Typically, TMJ projectiles are less expensive to produce due to the fact that less copper is needed to coat the lead core. Cons Restricted Velocities Due to the thin TMJ coating, velocities exceeding 2,000 feet per second can rip off the metal. And as you can imagine, that is not good for your accuracy. Delicate Coating During manufacturing, if too much crimp is applied to the projectile, you can damage the coating. The downside being you won't even know what happened until you go pull your trigger and see two holes in your target. The last type of projectile we're talking about today is TPJ. Total Polymer Jacket TPJs are similar to TMJs in that the lead is completely covered. 
However, instead of a metal coating, TPJs have a high temp polymer coating, as opposed to the layer of metal. Through the entire history of projectiles, TPJs are relatively new. Polymer coated projectiles were first designed in 1967 by KTW Designs with their Teflon coated projectile. And many companies are continuing to develop new processes to create and apply new polymers to projectiles. Let's get into the pros and cons. Pros. Less friction. The polymer coating reduces friction, thus the projectile reaches velocity with less pressure, which means cost effectiveness. Because TPJs need less powder to reach velocity, and because polymer coatings are less expensive than metal, the results are a cost-effective yet highly accurate round. Cons Muzzle Residue We found that if you fire thousands of rounds of polymer projectiles, you'll get a little bit of residue on your muzzle, which is okay because it wipes right off with no solvents, just a cloth is all you need. Supply and Demand like all new technology, there is not much initial demand, so companies don't see the value in adding them to their production lines. If you do find them, they tend to be overpriced. There are an enormous variety of projectile types. We have given you a brief overview of the three types that we most typically use at Minuteman Munitions. When it comes to choosing the right ammo for you and your firearm, there is more to think about than just the coating of the projectile. If you would like to learn more, tune in to our next episode where we discuss projectile weights and what they mean to bullet performance. I'm Spiro. Thanks for tuning in. Now let's get loaded.